Amos chapter 3. <clears throat> Hear the word that the Lord has spoken against you. O children of Israel. This is not something for. This is not a hope message. This is a judgment message. This is a warning against a whole family, Israel, which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, there's no doubt who this is written to. There's no way you can pass this on to anybody but the children of Jacob, the 12 tribes, who God brought out by the hand of Moses. And God is angry with them. Not because of the Gentiles, because of their actions, turning from the God of their fathers. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, 12 children. God has chosen no other. No other nation has been the apple of God's eye. So you can forget about your church. You can forget about your country. You can forget about what clan you belong to. You can forget about what race you belong to. If you're not of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribes, you're nothing. You're a Gentile. You're a dead dog. And when a woman came to Jesus seeking help, you know, you're a dog. Therefore, I, God, will punish you for all your iniquities. These are God's people. These are the only ones. These are the blessed ones. These are the ones that he made a covenant with. Don't you think just because you're a child of God that you can do whatever you want to do and not suffer the consequences? Now, the problem with that is, unlike Israel here, you may not suffer on this earth. You may not get a cancer. You may not get a disease. You may not even die early. You just may lose crowns. You may lose rewards. Eternal. But God said, listen, these people that are his, I will punish you. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Now, this ain't like walking down the road. These are two people. Can you be together? I mean, the biggest thing I can think about is, you know, the only thing I can think of is sports. Can you have two guys walking and agreeing with each other when they both have different teams. Can you have two people walking together with two different religions? And yet Jesus said, you can't serve God and you can't serve mammon. You can't sit at the cup of, of Jesus' table and you can't sit at the cup of Satan's table. Somewhere in the line, someone is going to lose their conviction, and they're going to sway either for God or for against God. And it's usually the one that are for God that will sway and churn. Things don't get better, they get worse. That's why we're told to be a division among the people. That's why we're told who we are to watch, we have company with, who we are to marry, who we are to associate ourselves with. Because you will seek down to the lower common denominator sin and wickedness will a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey will a young lion cry, cry out of his den if he have taken nothing again the, the symmetry of these people know about lions they live amongst lions lions are just a common Occurrence in the land of Palestine. They know their habit. They know it's like we know about with dogs, wild dogs, and uh, certain dogs that cause. We know certain characteristics about those dogs. We can tell when a dog is angry. We can know that a dog is mad. We have those things. And the children of Israel knows about lions. Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth? 
where no gin is is for him no because a gin is needed to catch the bird if there's no gin made the bird ain't going to be caught a gin is is not a drink it's a type of trap for birds shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all you put a trap down you do it properly you're going to catch something you maintain it you will catch something shall a trumpet now today would be our martyr verse being air race siren be blown in the city and the people not be afraid shall there be evil in the city and the Lord has not done it evil the result of sin the cause that God is doing upon these people because of their iniquity God is saying listen there are lions out there Satan and they're going to get the prey there's a bird out there you don't set the the snare you're not gonna get them the trumpet is for a warning surely the Lord God will do nothing but he reveals his secrets unto his servants the prophets as Amos he ain't gonna speak to the people they're not listening he's not gonna give them no revelation He's not going to give them no healing. He's not going to give them no divine ordinance. Because they've turned their back against him. What he's going to do, he's going to send Amos. He's going to send Isaiah. He's going to send Jeremiah. He's going to send Ezekiel. He's going to send these men and say, listen, if you don't get right, if you don't adhere to what we are telling you from God, you're in big trouble. But right now, your life is empty. You've got no, no prey as a lion. You've got no bird as being set in a snare. You're a trumpet. You're not afraid. I remember one time back where I lived in Connecticut, they had a thing with, with somebody accidentally sent off the, the air raid warnings. Actually set it off. And everybody was amazed that there was, this is a test, of the, whatever, however they say. There was no, this was a test. It was actually, the button was pressed, and there sh had there been an actual emergency. And no one, and no one at all called the police, called the media, had anything. They just went on about their life like there was nothing to happen. They weren't even afraid of a warning system. And this is what Israel's like. So Israel is likened to what America is today. You got people, there's a storm coming. There's a hurricane coming. And you can see the pictures. They, they take airplanes. They fly them into these storms. They give you all the, the, the coordinates of this thing. And they will stay on this beach and act like, uh, we're going to survive it. And then they mourn their dead bodies floating down south. Or wherever their bodies end up. There's no fear. There's no fear of God. So God has to speak to his prophets. To people who are not going to listen. And that goes for in 2016. We tell people what their future is according to the Bible. And they get nothing out of it. They walk away as a hungry lion. They walk away with a trap that they haven't caught anything. They hear the trumpet, but they don't do nothing about it. And God is not speaking to them. Maybe hopefully with our prayers that God will reach one person, but that person has to be in his heart searching for God the right way. Many are not. Publish in the palaces of Ashdod and in the palaces of the land of Egypt and say, Okay, this is God speaking to the Gentiles, nations. Assemble yourselves upon the mountains of Samaria. That's the capital of Israel, North Israel, the ten tribes. 
And behold, the great tumults in the midst thereof, and the oppressed in the midst thereof. Hey, come see my people and how much they are in tumults. Come and witness their suffering. How do you like that? Where do you see that today in verse 9? The cameras that are all over the world that are broadcast at 6 in the morning, 10 in the afternoon, noon at, on the day, and 10 o'clock at night. See all the suffering. See all the, the tumult, all the, the floods, all the tornadoes, all the earthquakes, all the floodings, all the shipwrecks. This is your media. And God's calling out to them, come, come and see. Why? You know what the media is supposed to do? For they know not to do right, saith the Lord. When that media shows you a tornado, when that media shows you a blizzard that people die on the highways, when the media shows you the, uh, 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 tornadoes and, and all kinds of weather, all kinds of earthquakes, when the media shows you all that stuff going around and people are dying in the streets for, for lack of food when the cows are running around, they're to show you that they're not doing right by God. See, these people worship a, a, a look at it, they worship a cow God and they're dying in the streets because their cow gods are not giving them nothing to eat. Something wrong with this picture here. They should come in and say, well, why does it have the, the, the people of the Bible, the pilgrims of the Bible, have always had food? And they're the ones who have always built hospitals. They've always helped the people. Why is there one religion? Well, look at all the pictures of this one big religion, how poor they are. What's the problem here? We're going to take you live into a family for one week that reads the Bible, loves the Bible, loves the God of the Bible, that are saved. And then we're going to take you a week of people who won't have anything to do with the Bible. We're going to bring you into a true Bible-believing church for a week. And we're not going to give our own press. We're going to give you the truth. And we'll take you into some you know, church that relishes in politics and everything else and bake sales and bazaars and all. We'll see the difference. If you're to point anything in the media in the Bible, verses 9 and 10, to say, this is what happens when you don't love God. Who store up violence. That's America. And robbery in their palaces. What is all that? That's evil. What is it? When you got to have police departments on December 31st or thereabouts come up with their yearly reports, how many houses were robbed? How many old ladies had their bags taken? How many people were murdered? How many people were, were shot by a gun? How many car accidents were there? How many DUIs were there? How many, how many, how many people are in prison? That is the result of sin. That is the evil. And those numbers should be published in the newspapers January 1st of all the morons who want to be involved in sin. Because you don't want to listen to God. You don't want to do what God has done to you. Look at the status. How many broken families because of adultery? How many broken families because of sexual disease? How many broken families because of that booze? Put the status of the booze and the alcohol industry on the front page of the newspaper and they'll be put out of business the next day. And then how much tax money the government gets from that junk. Run them out. That's what the media should be telling you. The media was put forth, when you talk about the Constitution, why they gave the power to the media. The media is powered by this government was to tell you what's going on in Washington, D.C. And they were to report to you the truth of every person that's in Washington, D.C., your governors and all your leaders that, hey, if there's corruption, it's the media's job to point it out and show you. That's what the, the command, that's what the commandment, that's what the thing is about the freedom of the press. They were to give all power to report to you public people what's going on behind the scenes that you can't find out. All these people that are running for the, for the presidential office today, that media should be saying, this guy says this, and he's a liar. This guy says that, oh yeah, he speaks the truth that. This guy says that, but he backs this. This guy is represented by this company. This guy is represented by that company. 
the media is to point out to you. For they know not to do right. How can the media do that? They be showing their own self. They be writing their own sins, their own iniquities, and their own ink. They be hanging themselves. You know what? You know how you know the Bible is a true book? If this Bible is a Jewish book, and it is. If this Bible is about the Jewish people, and it is. If this Bible is about Israel, and it is. This Bible, this book that's called God's Word, the Word of God, says about his people, I will punish you for your iniquities. There's no glossing over in the Bible. If you are a sinner, God will say in his word, you are a sinner. He doesn't use words as shacking up, living. He doesn't use words like it, it, it's their own privilege, it's their own rights. He says, if they know not to do right, saith the Lord, who store up violence and robbery in their palaces. Come on, spell it out, tell us. Tell it like it is. They do anything but. They were to tell you the truth about these people running for office, you would know exactly who to vote for. And it would be a hundred percent minority if you knew the truth about everybody. You knew everything that's going on. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, an adversary. There shall be even round about the land, and he shall bring down thy strength from thee, and thy palaces shall be spoiled. Because of your evil, because of your wickedness, I'm going to send somebody in there, and I'm going to attack you. The adversary is Satan. Job had a sin. And God told Satan, go ahead, go get him. For the end result was Job, Job, Job repented of his sin and got right with God. Adversary, evil, punish you, iniquity. You don't get an adversary for doing right. God will not give you an adversary. Now the adversary may show up. To try to stop you from doing right. But God's not going to send the adversary into your life for doing right. But he will allow that adversary if you're doing wrong. And you don't want that. Evil is a result of sin. And the Lord will perform it. When God sent those angels into Sodom and Gomorrah. The evil that happened to those angels. The end result was the, the how the city was the cities were destroyed because of their sin. And that was done by God. And thus saith Lord, as a shepherd taketh out of the mouth of a lion two legs or a piece of an ear. If that's what's left, your adversary, your adversary, the devil's go about seeking who he may devour. So shall the children of Israel be taken out that dwell in Samaria in the corner of a bed and in Damascus in a cup. The only way I could see this thing could be is that it's dead. If it's not dead, it's been completely wounded. All right, you may have a sheep that, that has a piece in the ear removed. But two legs? That sheep ain't going to get around too much when he's just, if, he, if he's living to have two legs. It says taken out of the lion. The two legs or the ears in the lion's mouth. So shall the children of Israel be... Taken out. There's pieces and parts of them. There's no whole body. It's like removing a cancer. But you got to reverse. 
instead of removing the cancer, you're, you're, you're taking out the few that are doing right. Samaria, corner of a bed, and Damascus in a couch. Two capital cities. Hear ye, and testify in the house of Jacob. Go down north. Jacob, Israel, you better pay attention. I'm talking to you. And when God sends the lion, when God sends Satan, that's a big... Would you say, God? That's when you got to put down what you're doing and say, oh, what, what was that? I didn't quite get that, God. Uh, you want to tell us again? You caught my attention, God. What's going on? And when people say capital punishment doesn't work, God designed capital punishment for people to say, hey, don't do it. God has given us diseases to say, don't do that. That's what, that's what may happen to you. Don't do it. Hear ye and testify in the house of Jacob, saith the Lord God, and, the, and saith the Lord God, the God of hosts, that in the day that I shall visit the transgressions of Israel upon him, I will visit the altars of Bethel. Uh-oh, we got trouble here now. Think about God come visiting your house. And he knocks on the door. Oh, hi, God. Well, what's that thing over there? Well, it's our Christmas tree. Oh, that's not an altar. That's just, just for the kids. What do you do to get to the presents? Oh, we kneel down. What do you do to water the thing? Gold and silver? You haven't read Jeremiah, have you? No, you haven't done that. When God comes knocking on your door and he finds your sin, he's not going to take an excuse. He's not going to take a hallway pass. I don't care what anybody says. It's a sin. Sin is a sin, and we got to stop dressing it up. Because God will come knocking one of these days. We believe the rapture's coming, don't we? Do we believe the rapture's going to come when we're telling a lie? Catch us right in the middle of a lie? Does he, do we believe the rapture is going to happen when we're, in, we're with somebody that we shouldn't be with? Uh, are you going to catch us a lie when we tell a joke that we shouldn't be telling? Catch us at the water cooler when we should be doing the job? Catch us with a cigarette in our mouth? Catch us with a beer can in our, in our lips? When God comes, when the Lord Jesus Christ meets us in the air, what will we be doing? We got a little relax on sins. We try covering them up. Because we don't want to lose people. We don't want to lose the sin. We don't think God's coming. Wait a little longer, Lord. I think I, I heard the song was. We got to realize that the Lord is coming. Day of visitation for the Christian. That's the rapture. That may be death. The wages of sin is death. That is written to Christians. That in the day that I shall visit the transgressions of Israel upon him, I will also visit the altars of Bethel. That is the golden calves. God's going to visit those altars. God's going to walk in there. Uh-huh. Yep. Didn't he send his angels into Sodom and Gomorrah? Say, I'm going to go check out what's going on down there. Didn't he come down and see the Tower of Babel? Uh-huh. See exactly what you guys are doing. Been reported to me well. Didn't God write the seven churches? Didn't God know what was going on inside those churches? Maybe God will one day come down and walk through your church. Uh-huh. I see. Yep. I see that. And the horns of the altar shall be cut off. Oh. You mean they had the exact imitation of what God's altars were. The same horns. Remember, God's altars had horns on them. They imitated God. 
and they change God into a cow and fall to the ground. You know what horns are in the Bible? They're a picture of power, strength. And God said, watch this. They're on the ground. You know what God told Dagon? Hit the ground, buddy. The next night, Dagon, <laughs> they did this to <laughs> He's cutting pieces down before the Ark of the Covenant. Down. You know what God's going to do to God's one day? Get down. You know what he's going to do to Satan one day? Get down. You know what a lot of the disco songs were about? Get down. When the rapture has, we're going to go up. You know, you may take a Christian and put them in a grave, but they, they're not going down in that grave. Once they die, they're absent from the body, up present with the Lord. You know what sin will do to you? You know what wickedness will get you down? Now, I will smite the winter house. Now, I have no idea what the winter and the summer house are. You see those things in the Bible, and it's just weird. Weird to me. We read today in Judges. The guy went in there, uncovered his feet. And when you see the expression, uncover his feet, it looks like some kind of like a bathroom kind of thing. Saul goes into a cave and uncovers his feet. And David and his men are there. I would, you know, as far as winter and summer house, it's a vacation spot. You know, when it's too cold, you go to the summer house. When it's too hot, you go to the winter house. But Lord said, I'm going to smite them. What's wrong with them? What's wrong with a house that you go winter in and you go in the summer that God has to smite it? Something else going on. And the houses of ivory shall perish. Ooh, one day animal rights people hate you for that. This is more than uh, piano keys and little knick-knack paddy wax. These are houses made of ivory. And the great houses shall have an end, saith the Lord. It's got to be something with Bethel. It's got to be something with false worship. And he leaves the chapter with that. And we start off the chapter, I will punish you for your iniquities. And we talk about a winter house, a summer house, a houses of ivory, and great houses. got to be something with iniquity. That they're going to get nothing out of it. That God has to come and visit. So when you hear a song, you better watch out, you better not bow. I'm telling you why. It's not Santa Claus that's coming. It's Jesus Christ. It's God coming. And he's making a list. Well, what, what, what are they doing down in Babel? All right, let's go down. Let's go check it out. Checking it twice. Oh, yeah, I see what they're doing. What do we hear about Sodom and Gomorrah? Making a list. Let's go down and check it out. Oh, we see what's going on. Checking it twice. Finally, if you've been naughty or nice. And when you compare those figs of Jeremiah, they were very evil figs. Well, what were the evil figs? They were naughty. You got the wrong song. That song ain't about Santa Claus. That's about God. And these are his people. And you better realize if he's going to judge his people, he'll judge those that are not his people. If he'll visit the land of his people, he'll also visit the land of those that are not his people. You better have your iniquity under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. If not, it's not paid. It's not washed. 